Hi, I'm David Lopez, Application Sales Engineer for Tempo Communications. This video provides an in-depth training on performing optical time domain reflectometer measurements and interpreting the measurements using the OFL 100. Please refer to the applicable instruction manual for detailed safety and operating instructions. The OFL 100 can be used with the touch screen or the fixed keys. The measurements can be initiated or stopped with the start-stop measurement key. The magnifying key can be used to zoom in on a feature and move the cursors. The set key can be used to access the OTDR settings. The escape key will back up the application one step. The cursor keys allow the technician to access and confirm a selection. The fixed keys are typically used in harsh environments when the technician might be wearing gloves. The OFL 100 is usually used with the touch screen that presents an easy to use intuitive interface. More than 80% of all failures in fiber optics is due to not cleaning or improper cleaning. This also pertains to the connections made during testing procedures. If proper cleaning is not performed, the OTDR bulkhead will be damaged very quickly and will require repair or replacement. Damaged and contaminated connectors will cause high insertion losses and high reflections. Clean the OTDR bulkhead using a Tempo 2.5 millimeter swab. Cleaning swabs are single use and are to be discarded after use. Clean the end of the SC APC connector of a one meter cable with the Tempo Reel Cleaner. Cleaning swabs and reel cleaners when compared to cleaning pens provide the most effective and thorough cleaning as the swab and reel cleaner clean the entire ferrule and face. Make sure to clean all bulkheads and ferrules prior to connection. All connectors and bulkheads in this video were clean before each connection. We edited this out to reduce the overall time of the video. Two cables are connected in series for demonstration purposes with a total length of approximately 1,000 meters. Select Auto OTDR mode from the main menu. The Auto OTDR mode allows even novice technicians to be able to make distance and loss measurements without having to enter critical test parameters. The optimum range and pulse width are automatically determined by the OFL 100. The technician does have the option to toggle between 1310 nanometers and 1550 nanometers and to adjust the length of the averaging time. The technician can also access these settings using the vertical row of soft keys on the right hand side of the screen. Push the settings key. The refractive index can also be set at this time as required. Pushing the auto test button will start a measurement. Under the trace display area, the events are listed showing the measured results. Note that the loss at the connector connecting the two cables is 0.51 dB and is annotated in red. The test button soft key can also be used to start a measurement. Use two fingers to zoom in on the trace. Pushing the one-to-one -one icon will return the display to the original measurement presentation. The technician can save a measurement to a file by pushing the save key. Previously saved files can be recalled for viewing and analysis. Select Expert OTDR Mode from the main menu. The Expert OTDR Test Settings provides the technician the opportunity to set all test parameters as desired. The Wavelength, Range, Pulse Width, Averaging Time, Refractive Index, and Unit of Measure can all be accessed and set to best suit the measurement to be undertaken. The Pass Criterion can be accessed to customize the loss settings as desired. The analysis thresholds can also be customized as desired. The technician can also reset the OFL 100 back to recommended default settings. Pushing the test button will start a measurement. 
When the measurement is complete, the cursors can be moved as desired. Under the trace display area, the events are all listed showing the measured results. Note that the loss at the connector connecting the two cables is 0.66 dB and is annotated in red. The technician can also access the list and event map views while in this mode. A fast save is also possible. The measurement is saved using the auto name utility. The settings key at the bottom of the display will replace the list view of results with the OTDR settings for a new measurement if desired. Real-time averaging can be used to display the OTDR trace in real time at an update rate of approximately 2 Hz. The real-time mode provides a technician the ability to monitor the fiber under test. Here, I pinch the fiber between the two spools at approximately 500 meter mark. Also, if the technician adds or disconnects to the fiber, they will be able to identify the effect. Pushing stop will allow the technician to exit the real-time mode of operation. Select event map mode from the main menu. The event map provides the technician with a linear view of the measurement using easy to read pass fail icons. Pushing the test button will start a measurement. The test results are displayed at the top of the screen. A bar graph shows the relative position of each event. The relative test data is displayed in the information box. A green check mark and green box indicate compliance to the test parameters. A red X and red box indicate that the test parameters were not met and that the technician needs to investigate. The next event and last event activation areas will move the information box to the next event or back to the previous. Here is a typical OTDR trace using the OFL100 to measure a 1,000 meter length of fiber with a bad connector at approximately the 500 meter mark. The bulkhead is on the left hand side and is represented as event 0. The connector that has a high insertion loss is event 1 and at the end of the fiber is event 2. The connector at event 1 is likely contaminated and requires cleaning. The assertion loss is 0.75 dB and is displayed in red as it exceeds the allowable threshold of 0.2 dB. The red indication aids the technician in identifying the fault and that action needs to be taken to resolve the problem. If the OFL100 produces a trace that has a long tail like this, you likely have an open SCUPC connector or some other highly reflective event that needs terminating and or resolution. The reflectivity from the connector can be reduced with a mandrel wrap as shown. You will also notice that the ghost is reduced and eliminated. A ghost is an exact multiple of the highly reflective event and is not a real event. Select the optical power meter from the main menu. The optical power meter allows the technician to measure absolute optical power expressed in dBm and relative power for loss measurements expressed in dB. An approximate minus 0.5 dBm 1515 nanometer signal from an SLS 520 is connected to the OPM port using a single mode cable. The wavelength can be set by scrolling through the available calibrated wavelengths. Make sure to set the wavelength to 1550 to match the signal being measured. The absolute optical power is displayed in dBm. A bar graph indicates the power measured within the range of the optical power meter. The vertical line shows the threshold level. Optical power above this level will be shown with a green bar and power below the threshold is red. A 0 dB reference can be set for making relative insertion loss measurements. The measurement threshold can be set as desired. Here we set the threshold to plus 7 dBm 
and the bar graph is displayed red as the optical power is below the threshold. A threshold of minus 25 dBm is recommended. Select the visual fault locator from the main menu. A VFL is used by the technician to visually locate damaged cables, faulty connectors, and macro bends. Connect a fiber under test to the VFL bulkhead. Turn the VFL on. Here you can see the red laser light clearly shows the damaged cable. Setting the 1 Hz or 2 Hz function will modulate the laser to provide an easier to see blinking light which aids the technician in high ambient light conditions. The VFL in the OFL100 is a safe class 2 1 milliwatt laser as verified by the FDA and the CDRH. But it is still good practice to not directly view the emission from the bulkhead or a fiber optic cable. VFLs with higher optical power are not deemed safe by the FDA and should not be used as they could cause permanent eye damage. Select the laser source from the main menu and use the OTDR port as a stabilized laser source. The laser source is turned on and will be active. The output power is displayed on the OPM510. The wavelength can be toggled between 1310 nanometers and 1550 nanometers. Make sure that the OPM510 is on the correct wavelength. The mode of the laser source can be constant wave CW, 270 hertz, 330 hertz, 1K hertz, and 2K hertz. The output power can be increased or decreased as desired. Select the optical loss test from the main menu. The optical loss tester allows the technician to measure the loss of a fiber optic cable or optical device. The technician can select the reference zero with the dust cap closed to null out any dark current from the detector diode. A patch cord is connected to the OPM port and then to the OTDR port. Turn the source on and select the desired test wavelength. A reference for 0 dB can be made by pushing the reference key. 0 dB is displayed as the relative power. The device under test can now be inserted into the optical path. The loss of the fiber spool is indicated in the relative power box. Select the RJ45 sequence from the main menu to measure a network cable to T568A or T568B compliance. Connect the network cable to LAN2 and connect the receptacle to the other end of the cable. The technician can test to T568A or T568B as desired by pushing the test button. Select file management from the main menu to access and manage save files. From the folders on the left hand side of the display, the technician can select the desired measurement to view. The technician can then view and analyze the trace as desired. The technician can select the Save Settings key to define the naming convention for future saved files that are automatically generated. Select System from the main menu to access the system settings. System settings allow the technician to adjust the auto off time, the backlight brightness, turn the beeper on and off, access the available languages, enable the USB port and set the time and date. The information key shows the relevant hardware and software version. The update key will enable a firmware upgrade as available. The saved files on the OFL100 can be exported to a Windows computer for use in the trace viewer. Turn on the OFL100 and connect the OFL100 to the computer using the supplied USB cable. The USB acknowledgement tone should be heard. Navigate within Windows Explorer to the saved SOR files. Copy the desired file to your computer. 
Open the trace viewer and use the folder open icon to open the SOR file saved on the computer. The saved file will then be displayed. The technician can then view and augment the data to create a closeout report. All service and technical support is located at our Tempo Communications facility in Vista, California and our United Kingdom facility. <music>